It is now 12 o'clock here in Waco, Texas, and time to get started with our Facilitation Certification 1 class, Lesson 7, How to Facilitate Conferences. And to get us started today, we have an icebreaker, which is, if your goals program was a sport, what sport would it be and why? And we're going to start with, again, Dennis. Sure, that's a really, really hard icebreaker. Um, if your goals program was a sport, what sport would it be and why? Uh, you know, I'm going to say it's football. And the reason I say that it would be football is because um, your intention is always to get to the other end of the field. And uh, forward progress happens most of the time. But occasionally um, you get sacked or you, you move the ball backwards. And then you just get up, brush yourself off, and keep trying to move uh, forward progress on the field. Cool. I like that one. Thank you. Okay. Yasin. I hope the audio is okay. So one of my goals is... Okay, Yazin, we're having a hard time hearing you. It sounds like you ha do not have very good bandwidth. Um, try it again. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay. Um, you may need to log out and log back in and see if you get a better connection or something, but uh, uh, we were getting... Uh, a lot of screwy noises. Okay, Jeremy, your turn. Okay, that was a really great uh, analogy, Dennis. So I would say a marathon race. You know, you, I think I think long term for my goals, uh, for most of my goals, but you keep running towards them, and then you, sometimes you're out of breath, and you have to get a second win to make it to the end of the race or achieve that goal. So I'd say marathon. Okay. Cool. All right, Jonah. Um, for me, I would say golf. Um, and <clears throat> the reasoning uh, behind it is um, when you're just starting out, it's really easy to pick up on some big things that need to be changed. You start seeing immediate improvement, but then as you go, you get better. You see less and less um, huge changes, and it's more steady growth over time. Uh, so you really have to stay dedicated. Uh, to continue to get better because you may not see a bunch of strokes come off your game uh, like you did when you first started playing. So you have to stay dedicated and uh, keep your goals in mind. Okay. All right. Keith? I, I would have to say motor racing again. Um, it's, it's a kind of a sport. It, it, it's progressive. In other words, you, you may have a very good vehicle. You, all your stuff may be right, but somebody touches your bumper or, or gives you a broadside, and you got to start over again, um, or you got to keep your engine improving all the time. So I, I would think it's something that is progressive, and you continuously get better as you grow in this sport. Okay. All right. Cool. Larry? <clears throat> well, I would say walking. I know it's not a heck of a sport, but uh, at this point in my life, you know, I tend to don't get in too big a hurry as far as setting, you know, uh, challenging, you know, very challenging goals, and uh, tend to I'm taking it easy too much, but. Uh, <laughs> That's probably where I would put it at, I okay. guess. All right. All right. Linda. Good morning. It would have to be tennis for me. Um, I love the process of I know when I throw the ball up whether I'm going to, um, whether I threw it up, correctly to hit the sweet spot. It's the precision to hit the sweet spot on my racket. And it's uh, that it's when it hits the racket and 
deciding intuitively where to place the ball so that the competitor, um, they can always outsmart you, but should you take an alley shot, should you, you know, cross court or do a lob, uh, which often gets you in trouble. But I just, there's something about the process of having to make that decision in the moment. Okay. All right. Lois? Okay, I'm a softball player, but I think for this analogy, I would say swimming. Um, because if you stop, you're going to sink. <laughs> so you better keep swimming. Um, and if you have an obstacle or an objection, maybe sometimes you have to change what style of stroke you're using. Um, maybe you have to flip over and float on your back for a little while until you figure out your next step. Um, and then I think you're always competing against yourself. So to try to better your last time, um, I think swimming would be the sport for my goals program. Oh, okay. Cool. Mamta? Uh, good morning. So for me, I think it's basketball. Um, I think that it's very much a team sport, and over time you realize that you need others to make the goal or the team needs to work together. So when I fall off my goals or I feel like they're too challenging, I, I like to reach out to others to help me, to get me refocused, sometimes to just get me pointed back in the right direction or just encourage the achievement of the goals. So I would say it's basketball. Okay. All right. Tom? Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say my goals program is probably like uh, like football in the sense of, uh, you know, everything is a process. Everything has to, you know, you practice and practice and practice. And, uh <clears throat> Um, oh heck! Yeah, practice and, and it's a process. And if it doesn't go right, then you, then practice some more. And uh, I guess that's that's the only analogy I come up with on it. Okay. Yeah. When it comes to football, because two of you now mentioned football, people. Uh, yeah. I mean, you hear that the games are won based on what? Where do they normally screw up? With uh, the processes. I mean, the <clears throat> games are won lost in the trenches, but it's, uh, um, you know, you see the, the teams that are that are more disciplined, that um, really their discipline is their discipline is their they are working towards their goals every time they're practicing their discipline is is uh, uh, keeps them on track to accomplish those goals <laughs> okay yeah I've, I often when you're listening to the commentators and they'll say oh, they broke one of the basic rules and it's the games are won based on a lot of times, just the basics of the game. True. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, go back to Yazin. Yazin, did you get your uh, uh, microphone working better yet? Okay. Shows you're muted. Okay. Yazin, we're not, we're not hearing you. Okay. Hope hope you're there in the listen mode at least. So we'll move on. Uh, did I miss anybody? Nope. Okay. Next, seven day goals. Okay, Tom, how'd you do in your seven day goals? Well, like like I mentioned earlier, my <clears throat> seven day goals. I um, on the the uh, uh, the. The eating and the uh, and the walking I haven't been as good on. Um, I did. I am going to change it up a little bit and uh, 
and go basically to the basics and go back to the basics and meditate every morning um, for 30 minutes prior to leaving for work. I think when I meditate, then the rest of my day um, goes, the rest of my day goes better. Um, and I think that'll line me up good for working out. Um, on my business, uh, I have to uh, draw a roadmap for my products and services and do that by March 1st, um, which is this week. <laughs> so some, this week I'm gonna have a roadmap for my uh, products and services. Okay, all right. Mamta, how about you? Um, so my seven-day business goal was to uh, focus on the read and the listen and also to uh, make contact with a couple of organizations, and I was successful in doing that, although um, not as successful in achieving my score that I wanted to. So I listened three times and I read once. I was able to make contact with an organization here that is on the northwest side of Chicago and secure a meeting. Uh, I gave myself a score of uh, five. I just didn't feel like I completed my target, but that is something I'm going to finish in the, today. My personal goal was to exercise every day, and I did that. And the developmental goal is I'm reading a book called The Gift of Attitude, and I have uh, read uh, further chapters and uh, getting close to finishing it in the next two weeks. Okay. Lois. Okay. Um, so my seven-day business goal was to um, market and the Leadership for Women program um, and to close two sales. And, and I did share this morning that I wasn't able to do that. I am generating a lot of interest in the program, just not closing the sale with the right person. I'm, I, I've got to get to the decision makers, so I'm working on that. Um, I am, I did do my yoga and my meditation five out of the seven days for my personal goal. And my developmental goal was to continue working on organizing my prospects and getting that into our Insightly program. And I have been working on that. So, okay. All right, Linda. Alrighty, um, my business goals, um, let's see here. I did have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with a, formal, a former real estate colleague who is interested in the program. I sent her the productivity challenges sheet and asked her to return it to me. I'll, I need to follow up on her. She's busy, but kind of um, scatterbrained busy a little bit. Um, and she attested to that. Uh, I sent the same to the vice president of the bank. I followed up with him, as you suggested, and have not heard anything the past week from him. He's really hard to get a hold of. I will have a one-on-one -on -one with, um, I'll have a meeting with a gentleman on March 1st, and who took the program already, and I will. I also just uh, secured another appointment on March 6th with actually a former employer in the healthcare field. He owns a um, a franchise, a healthcare franchise. Um, well connected, and I'm looking forward to pick his brain. Um, franchises generally have their own training system, so I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I won't be surprised if he doesn't want to take it. Um, I'd be very surprised if he did, and I'm happy, but um, he is well connected. He was a pharmaceutical rep prior to that. Um, my personal goals, I kept to my exercise program of uh, 30 minutes, three to four times a week. And by the way, I hadn't said this before, but when I babysit for my two and a half year old and five month old grandchild, I could five to seven hours on one day. I consider that exercise, um, uh, and I have kept um, my boundaries with two people that I have pledged to do so. 
my developmental goals, I have not, I didn't do too well with that. I didn't do well at all with that this week. Um, I've read a little bit more of the one thing and I did not secure the book, A More Perfect Question, and I did not finish uh, The Magic Ingredient by Paul Meyer. However, I just finished a webinar on um, handling objections this morning. So I gave myself a six. Okay, now you were saying about a franchise operation. Correct. It's a home care, uh, non-medical home All care. Right. I'm just so that you know. I did okay. a lot of work when I was in the field with, with franchise operations. Pete Morell has worked with McDonald's, Burger King, uh, Chick-fil-A, and one of our larger clients is, uh, I'm trying to think, it's not Jenny Craig. It's one of those, one of those like a Jenny Craig. Um, oh, okay. All right. So franchise operations are good prospects if you get to the owner of the franchise. And he is. He is the owner. Okay. So don't say just because they're franchise operations, they have, you know, training. Uh, that, uh, especially when you look at the cost of training. So if he says, well, we have training we send our people to, and, and especially when they come back and they say it's free. Yeah, <laughs> it's not free. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's it's not. It's very costly. Okay. Yeah, it is. All right. You know what? You just um, your point was is quite valid. What I found myself, I asked this question of another uh, employer um, who has another home health care system, home care system, and she said, "Oh, we have our own training." And I just figured out I bought into that objection. So thank you very much for that, Sam. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, you know, like they say, somebody's always selling. They're either selling you or you're selling them. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, Larry. Uh, yes. My uh, business goal was to continue, uh, continue de developing my prospecting system. Uh, supposed to work three hours on that, but I only worked an hour. Uh, but I have a, a meeting set up this afternoon with a Chattanooga a representative with the Chattanooga Chamber of Commerce, and uh, so I, I feel like I made I've made some progress there. I'm going to be making uh, listening to uh, I guess a proposal to join the Chattanooga Chamber, and uh, probably will. Uh, my personal goal was to continue finish that teeth whitening system that I was uh, involved in. I did that. Uh, my development goal. I'm in the, working in the EPL, going through the EPL, and specifically working in the plan of action. Okay. Now, when you said Chattanooga, are you talking about Tennessee? Right. One of our uh, most successful franchises came from there and he used to work Chattanooga but then he moved to Atlanta but years ago he used to work Chattanooga I don't That's know if they'll, they'll know his name but his name was Dick Hunter okay well it's interesting uh, I was on the Chattanooga Chamber website and they there's no LMI no uh, he's not there anymore there's no, I mean, there's no LMI franchise uh, businesses up there that I could tell. Nope. So it's wide open. You got you got the whole world there in front of you. Right. Okay. All right, Keith, you're next. Uh, business goals, as I said this morning, it's the reorganizing of, of uh, my prospects, the LMI way, and I will do the three letters every day and just tell six persons what I do. Personal goal, continue to read principal center. And development goal, I've started the exercise. 
and the push-ups. So I, I think I'm going to be better, even better next week. The habit will be there. Good. All right. Thank you. Jonah, you're next. Sorry, didn't have my uh, mic unmuted. Um, <clears throat> my business goal uh, was to reach out to um, all of the leads in Houston. Um, I got that done, set up some good calls there. Um, my personal goal was to um, uh, get caught up on my New Testament stuff. I got that done. And uh, developmental goal was to, to work out every day, and I got that done as well. Okay, good. Uh, let's see, Jeremy. Okay, so my seven-day business goal was to enter my prospecting card, the LMI format, into Airtable, and then spend a, an additional two hours developing my prospecting system. I was able to accomplish that. My seven-day personal goal was to eat my macros five out of seven days and complete 500 push-ups and 500 box steps. I didn't track my macros a few days, so I don't know if I accomplished that goal, but I did accomplish the 500 push-ups and the 500 box steps. And my developmental goal is to transcribe Chapter 6, um, the thought factor and achievement from As a Man Thinketh, and I did that as well. Okay, good. Uh, now, Yazin, have you gotten your mic working yet? Hi, we had, I had an internet problem. Can you hear me better now? Yes, I can hear you much better now. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so I worked on a chapter uh, in my Human Resource Manual project. Um, there were a couple of forms that needed uh, some legal work and advice, so these are done. Uh, I got my step count uh, target uh, for four days. That's one more than planned. And I re rewrote my resume as a personal uh, development goal. Um, so now it's ready for, uh, you know, being attached to proposals or uh, freelance applications. Okay. Thank you. And Dennis. Sorry about that. I forgot to unmute. Um, yeah, so my business goal was to tell at least seven people about a position opening that I have for an office manager. Um, I was able to tell several people about that position opening, and um, I didn't keep track of exactly how many, but I know it was more than seven, uh, as I need to get that position filled sooner than later. My personal goal was to celebrate my son's birthday in a special way with him. This past weekend, uh, the weather didn't cooperate. So we weren't able to celebrate um, his birthday. We we're gonna plan on going to take him to a go-kart track, but there was too much snow on the ground. Um, so as they say, when life hands you lemons, you make lemonade. So we had a great time playing in the snow instead. Um, and then developmental was to continue to pray at least four uh, days in a week with my wife. And we were able to do that and um, are continuing to enjoy that, uh, that time of prayer together. Okay, cool. Well, since you're there, go ahead and report on this week's lesson. Sure. Um, so this week I was able to listen to the facilitation uh, training five times, and I read through it a couple of times to so two times. Um, the most important idea for me, it was, it was interesting because um, it talked a lot about the, the facilitator not necessarily being a teacher, but being a facilitator and making sure that you're able to apply what the participants are going through with their business. And so for me, um, the way that I am going to use that, the way that I, I, I do try to use it, the way that I do use it is ensuring that I know and understand enough about the business and the challenges that they're facing to be able to help them make those connections and facilitate connections in their mind of what they're learning and how they can apply that. And um, Sam, I will say you're doing a fantastic job of that, uh, you know, in modeling that for us in this facilitation training. Um, and so that really helps to be able to see it carried out well and um, helping make sure that we're applying it directly to what it is that we're learning. And my score, I'll give myself a six. A six. Okay, cool. Good. 
And we're back to you get to pick the next uh, volunteer. Uh, all right. Fantastic. Um, let's skip down the line a little bit. And Linda. <laughs> How did I know you were going to pick me? <clears throat> um, let's see here. The most important idea. Oh, I read and listened. Uh, I listened twice and I read three times. The most important idea or value by idea I got was the principles of the program and how they apply to the facilitator. Um, again, the emphasis that I am a facilitator and not a teacher. And that is a learning curve for me because I did teach um, for t uh, 12 years and it was um, so to facilitate is, is quite different. I am there to introduce the ideas and tools from the program and to guide the participants to use them to achieve their predetermined goals. And those, of course, sought out by the head um, of the company that they work for. I will apply these since I haven't had any um, experience facilitating with LMI yet. Um, I'll use it to facilitate the lesson while paying attention to the participants' feedback and what their interest is in the discussion. Um, I'll also use the action sheets, uh, the gray sheets, as a measurement as to how how much each person did. Um, I remember in one of the audios to uh, to do that so that I understand how much they're putting into it because what we put into it uh, we get out of it um, and I gave myself a six and you're going to volunteer who oh thank you um, I will volunteer uh, Mamta Linda. Um, so I read and listened. I listened three times and I read once. The most important idea, just like some of the other uh, last two folks, was to really try to stay in the role of the facilitator, not the teacher. Um, and I think the way I would apply it would be to refrain from providing the answer to the question, but just try to continue to pause and inquire and probe and hope that everyone's going to come back out with their ideas. So holding back even when you know the answer is uh, something that I think can really help in the facilitation. And I gave myself a score of five. And I would call on uh, Lois. Okay. Thank you, Amta. Um, I'm kind of going along with everybody else too. On um, oh, I'm sorry. I read one time, four times. I read four times and I listened one time. Um, the most important idea to me came from page seven dash twelve. Um, the role as the facilitator should not be that of an authority um, to structure the sessions, encourage participation clarify, summarize, bring out good ideas that are presented by the group and in general loosen up the group so that members are willing to uh, attempt new ways of thinking and acting. And, and I think that's very true. And I think for me personally, it's just knowing the material for that particular class and following the steps that are outlined in our lessons um, to really guarantee a good experience for the participants. You have to keep the conversation on track uh, and make sure that everyone participates and that they feel comfortable participating and, you know, just having control of the conversation. If one person starts to dominate or if somebody is not participating to get them involved in the discussion. Um, <clears throat> I gave myself a score of seven this week. I don't think I did as well as I could, so I will do better next week. And I will call on Keith. Hi, I 
Thanks, uh, Lewis. I listened three times and I read the lesson twice. Most valuable idea to me was the principles of facilitation because sometimes, to me, it teaches you to listen more than speak. Uh, and, and maybe say a few things to encourage conversation. Because most of us have a tendency to speak about what we know. And the persons who really should share feel intimidated. So I think that was the most important part of this whole exercise. And I gave myself a seven. I will definitely apply those principles in my next facilitation. Just curious, I, when is your next facilitation? <laughs> uh, I have an appointment on Thursday with an existing client. Um, and uh, I expect that will happen early in March, by the second week in March. I expect that to happen. Okay. All right. And I will pick on Jonah. Okay. So I uh, read four times, listened twice. Now, the most important idea for me um, was um, it was very simple, but um, that I'm a leader, not a teacher. Um, and the way to apply that for me is to stimulate thoughts and ideas throughout the conferences. Um, it's not a lecture. It's not um, presenting my opinion on things or anything. It's more um, facilitating discussion so people can talk about what they need to talk about. Um, I think that's where we can get into trouble as we try to become experts in other people's fields when we just flat out don't know as much about their fields as they do. Uh, but we can ask really good leading questions um, to, to get there, uh, to help them get there and reach their goals. Um, so that's what I got from it. Um, one to 10, I'll give myself a nine. And I will call on Tom. Thank you, Jonah. Okay, um, back here. Um, I read and listened three times each again. Uh, most important idea uh, I, I found out of this was um, to, uh, to, to focus and keep, keep everything clear in my mind, my role, um, and uh, um, to facilitate instead of uh, teaching, um, and I should be able to do that and everything. I should be even in, you know, lean and stuff. I, I should be facilitating more than just being a, a, a teacher. Um, and let's see. I, okay, I already, oh, I gave myself a three. And let's see. I kind of lost track a little bit, but I think um, Dennis did. Dennis? We started with Dennis. Okay, then Keith. Uh, Keith went also. Wow, did everybody go? No, not everybody. Let's see. I thought I, I, thought I heard Larry go. Jeremy. No, Larry didn't go. Or Jeremy. Jeremy. So you want Jeremy. Oh, Larry. No, you said yeah, Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy. Yep, Jeremy. Okay, thank you, Tom. So I, I listened seven times and I read twice. The most valuable idea that I got from this lesson was, uh, like the majority of people, learning that I'm a leader, not a teacher or lecturer, and that my role is not that of an authority but I'm there to help the participants gain an awareness of the fundamentals and focus on measurable results that help them reach their preset goals. Um, I will apply this idea as, let's see, I'm going to make sure that each person is participating by following the example that we're, that I'm experiencing in these certification classes with you, Sam, 
and I'll have every participant share and ask them questions or tell stories that will reinforce the fundamentals. And I'll also ask questions to keep them on the course toward their goals if or when they're off track. And um, I gave myself a score of eight. And I will go with Larry. Okay, thank you. I read six times. I did not listen. Um, the most important idea that I got was uh, my major responsibility is maintaining the controls that ensure participation so that each individual works toward a, and accomplishes their preset goals. That's a uh, pretty big, uh, pr pretty tall order and you stop to think about it. Uh, but and uh, I will apply that when the uh, it talks about in there the principle, the basic principles of facilitation during the conference. Uh, I wrote down a seven of those. There's that I think there's eight or nine. Focusing on results, measurement, keep uh, keep your measuring uh, controls. And number two, getting participants to organize their daily activity, daily activity to overcome past conditioning. I thought, you know, that's, that right there is going to be a, a little bit of a challenge for some folks. And uh, keep the mood positive. Help participants gain awareness of fundamentals that translate to skills that produce results. And that's staying on track, staying, of course, relevant and current. Uh, identify blocks to achievement and productivity. And uh, keep discussions on track. Be a facilitator, not a teacher. Uh, lecture and seven uh, transfer ownership of the goal to participants to the participants <clears throat> and I rated myself about a seven about a seven there and I will call on Dawson you got it Uh, thank you. So I read four times and I listened once. Um, I felt that everything in this chapter went together in a parallel way, except one idea that struck me, which is the idea of doing a no agenda session. Um, so I kind of have to keep this in the back of my mind. If I see a group that's not adapting or you know, the organization of the agenda is killing the dynamic. I have to resolve to that. Um, and I gave myself a score of eight. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me see. Our next question is, why do we emphasize that a facilitator is not a teacher? Who would like to take that? number of you mentioned it. Who wants to uh, reiterate it? Okay, Linda and then Jeremy. Um, someone had mentioned that, you know, we don't know their, their company like they do. They don't know the process, the products, etc. We're not experts in that field. Asking the right questions to have them become more aware of how to uh, think, think, think through challenges. Um, we are not there to teach them how to think. They are to uh, muster up that ability to think on their feet if we ask the right questions. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, I think Jeremy, you were the other individual? Yes, well, I have uh, participation. Participation in the program is where the attendees will learn the material. 
And so my role as a facilitator is to lead the discussion and maintain the controls that ensure participation so that each individual works toward and accomplishes their preset goals. Okay, good. Next question we have is, uh, did you download or acquire a facilitation guide for an LMI program? Dennis, did you get a facilitation guide? Yes, I did actually. I was able to um, to download the um, the the one for the pre course conference for the effective personal productivity, um, and it's it's great. It it goes through step by step, and it's um, it gives you everything you need really to to be able to facilitate it well. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Yasin, did you uh, download a facilitation guide? I've sent my coach uh, an email requesting it, and I haven't heard back, so I expect it uh, tomorrow or so. Okay, well, keep on them because it's important that everybody has a guide. Uh, Jeremy, mm -hmm. how about you? I have not yet. I've, I've reached out to Karen. I should be getting it this week, hopefully. Okay. Uh, yep, keep after her. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Jonah, I know you did because you're here in a home office. You don't have a choice. <laughs> Keith, how about you? You have a facilitation guide? You know, I'm not sure. I know I've um, I got one when I did the EPP, uh, but certainly not not more than that. Okay. Well, there's one for every program, uh, so you may want to get a hold of Lucy and if you need if you need additional ones. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay, Larry. I think you got one for the EPL. Uh, uh, yes, I have one for the EPL. Okay, good, because that's the program you're working. Uh, Linda, how about you? Yes, we have availability uh, through our library. Um, that's what they call it. Um, and I have been encouraged to get through the kickoff one and two. Okay. All right. Lois? Yes, I do. I have the EPP, and we are, um, Mike and I are working on updating the Leadership for Women with some of the suggestions from Nancy. Okay. Yeah, and just so that you know, in the Leadership for Women, uh, that's actually down at Product Development, and they're also getting information from Nancy and from some of the other people uh, because they're going to be right. updating the program in and of itself, so we'll have a facilitation guide along with that. Good, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mamta? We have access to it in our library, and I have downloaded it. I just haven't gone through it yet. Okay. All right. And Tom? There we go. Um, I thought I had it. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to get with Mike and make sure I have the right thing, um, the right stuff that, uh, that I downloaded the right stuff. Okay. Yeah. As a, uh, a franchisee, you should have the uh, login information for the LMI resource area, and all of them are in there. Okay. Great. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Next item here is... It talked about power thoughts. Um, who would like to give me their favorite power thought? Okay, Tom, your mic is live, so apparently you have one. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, you see how that works? <laughs> yeah, that was bad. Um, no, I, I. I don't. <laughs> I bet you do, and you don't even know it. I'm sure I do. <laughs> and I can give you one to bail Tom out here. All right. Uh, I actually just posted it to our uh, social media stuff today. 
um, to accept the challenges so you can feel the exhilaration of victory, and that was by uh, George Patton. Okay. All right. Good. Lois? Okay, I took one out of our book. Um, I liked it. It said, the person who gets ahead is the one who steps up the stairs instead of staring up the steps. Ah, good, good. All right, who else? Jeremy? Yeah, I've, I've actually got this one framed right in front of my desk. I love it so much. It says from Paul, of course, Paul Meyer, whatever you vividly imagine, ardently desire, sincerely believe and enthusiastically act upon must inevitably come to pass. Uh huh. All right. That's a good one to break down with people, too. You can take that in bits and pieces. It works, works well. Okay. Uh, Dennis, I see your mic is live. Yeah, the one that I like to use is uh, shoot for the moon, and if you miss, you'll still end up amongst the stars. Okay. All right. And there were a couple of other mics, but they've gone dormant. Keith? Uh, one of mine is, today is the first day in the rest of your life. Yes, it is. Good. Linda? Two of mine are, the room for improvement is the largest room in the world, and change is inevitable, growth is optional. Why not take the option? Oh, good, good. All right. And uh, Yazin? That is a short one. Uh, the goal with no plan is just a wish. Ah, true. Good, good. Okay. And it's good to, to have these because you could use them in a number of different areas. And people actually have a tendency to remember them, uh, especially the shorter ones because they're easier to memorize. And you'll have people that will use it with other individuals um, so okay it's good to have these different power thoughts okay did anyone follow through and start a power thought or stories book okay Linda and then Jeremy I haven't started a book as such but for years I've been adding to uh, my computer uh, and saving quotations that I like, and several of them are what we have uh, been provided with. So it's not a book. It's not a tangible. It's on my computer. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, uh, I've gotten so many over the years I've had to categorize them. Put them in. I have I have folders, and I decided my folders were taken up drawers, so I ended up having to put put them on a computer in years. And uh, so, the longer you're in the business, the more you're going to get. That's true. Okay, Jeremy. Yes, I, I did. I um I didn't do anything physical. I just have a electronic folder on my desktop where I started, and I added a short story yesterday to it. Okay, good. Yeah, it's good to keep these different stories and different items. They're good thought stimulators. Uh, there are times when you'll be facilitating a class and somebody will bring up um, a challenge uh, or the group in-house will bring up a challenge and, and you can use these different stories along with them. Uh, and you could use them. You could send them to different individuals as little, uh, not only thought stimulators, but uh, uh, little shots in the arm. So uh, keep keep those. All right. Now, next item is the forms and additional information. There was the recording on results and resales. Who got who had a chance to listen to that? No one had a chance to listen to that. Did anybody see it on the, uh, uh, when I sent out the email assignments? Lois? Yes, I, I listened to it this morning, and I've listened to so many lately. I can't really, I'll be honest with you, I can't remember a lot of it. 
Um, but I did listen to it this morning. Um, okay, but you don't remember anything from it? <laughs> that's terrible. Um, I remember, you know, just that it was kind of summarizing what we're talking about, though, that how important it is to listen um, and, and not talk so much, but to listen to your folks uh -huh. in your call. Okay. All right. Larry, your mic is live. Uh, yes. <clears throat> I listened to it a couple of times. I, I didn't really get a lot, uh, seemed like a lot of out of it, but he says something, he said something on there about we, we do not, uh, sell development that we should look for people who already know development and show them our process. I thought, uh, you know, that was kind of interesting. Okay. Uh, an interesting fact. Does anybody know what the number one genre of books that are sold is? And hopefully I said that right. Personal development. Personal, de <laughs> no, personal development. Personal development is the number one genre of books sold Okay, from bookstores or on the internet, which means people are interested in what? Personal development. Personal <laughs> development. Boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> You're right. It's personal development. So they're out there. They're, you know, if you just went to a bookstore and hung around the self-help section and everybody that went through there and looked looked at those books and, and if you just talked to them and said if you had a process that would take all these books and help you to apply it at one time so you can get the biggest sense of improvement would you be interested in seeing it uh, now I, I just threw that out at the top of my head but anyways the thing is people are out there and looking for ways to improve themselves and you have the best tool to do that okay um, anybody have any questions or comments on this week's lesson no it seems like we got through it pretty pretty rapidly but uh, most of you got the idea out of it the right idea because you were saying a lot of the same things which is good because that's what facilitation is all about Okay, assignments. We're going to evaluation of results and graduation. So we're going to be looking at the midterm participants evaluation, the midterm evaluation with the economic decision maker, mid-course conference with the economic decision maker, post-course conferences, conclusion and graduation. So those are the different segments of what we're going to be reviewing next week. Okay, read, highlight, make notes, complete the feedback sheet online, review the midterm evaluation and the fi final evaluation forms. Now, not every program has a mid-course evaluation. Majority of them, 80% of the ones that we have do. Review the uh, progress, your progress on your win-win goals. And then uh, continue to work on your win-win goal planning sheets and complete any remaining items from previous lessons. Since it says review your progress on win-win goals, Tom, how are you doing on your win-win goals? I keep clicking this, double clicking this. <laughs> um, I think I'm doing fairly good on my win-win goals. Um, I haven't looked at them this week. I should. Well, out of sight, how out of how mind. Do I, yep. How do I? How do I get them? If I how do I? How do I tackle them if I don't have them in front of me? Right. Right. Yep. Good point. Okay. 
All right. Uh, let's see. Mamta, how about you? Uh, I don't have them in front of me either. Um, but, you know, one of my goals is to narrow down the focus um, on the markets that I would be approaching here. And uh, working with Jeff, I've managed to do that. So I think that's one goal that I remember that was uh, implemented. Uh, so that I'm happy about that. And then there are others uh, that I would have to pull up and look at them. I don't have them up here right now. Okay. Where where are they? Uh, well, we have them from our um, EPP training. So they are in my EPP folder. We did the win-win agreement there, and I've just been carrying that forward for all the subsequent trainings that I've been through. Mm -hmm. Okay. And where's that folder? Uh, it's in my binder. In your binder. Where's your binder? Yes. It's on my desk. I have to open it to the right page, and okay. I can read them all. Okay. So you, you got them handy, right? I do have them. I do have them. Okay. All right. And Sam, I do have, I have mine in front of me here now. Good. Um, so, and, and uh, how are you doing on yours? Not you, not you have them in front of you. Yeah, I'm doing okay on, on most of them. It's just the one that uh, on the getting back into shape that I'm not doing as well on. Um, but, uh, um, you know, most of my others were developing my website, um, including LMI products and stuff on it. I am doing two books a month, so that's that's working. That's doing well. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 uh, staying up on all of them, but one. Okay. Uh, do you need help with that one? It's a it's a mental thing. I think it's a, I think once I get my uh, uh, start meditating and become a little bit more disciplined, I'll get I'll get that. Um, it's the part on getting back into shape. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, now I'm I'm not going to go through with this with everybody because I yeah you know, I just but I figured I you, you get the idea, and that's the same thing with you and your participants is if if it's not there they're going to get off track now hopefully while I was asking those questions everybody was scrambling looking at their win-win goals and and that is a key component so uh, it, it's interesting um, I have a person that is doing uh, an EPL program uh, online the online programs that we have and he's doing it with the company and instead of him doing any of the scoring or looking at the materials and doing all that, he's having the mentors do that. And I thought that was an interesting concept. So, uh, and hopefully you're sharing your progress with your mentors and they're asking you questions about your, your win-win goals and the progress you're making. Okay. Uh, seven day goals. Let's see. Let's just go down the list and, and we'll uh, start with Tom. Okay, my seven day goals. Um, let me go back up here. Uh, <clears throat> well, I have to continue to draw my roadmap for my products and services um, and have that done this week, March 1st. Um, personal is to uh, uh, meditate every morning for 30 minutes before I leave for work and um, and then my uh, uh, I'm going to say my business goal is is uh, is uh, my business goal is the roadmap and my personal is the meditation and developmental is um, uh, read two chapters on a new book that I'm getting uh, by next week. Okay. And Mamta. I 
Um, a seven day smart goal is to identify five targets uh, that I can uh, focus on at the AHMA, which is the American Hardware Manufacturers Association. Uh, business goal is to listen um, six times and read once. Personal goal is to exercise every day, and development goal is to finish my book. Okay, uh, Lois. Okay, um, my business goal is going to be to schedule three sales interviews. Um, my personal goal is to complete the plans and send out invitations for the bridal shower. Um, and my developmental goal, I'm going to keep the momentum going that I have right now and, and continue working with organizing my prospecting system. Okay. Linda? All righty. My business goal is to work on how to handle challenges, uh, objections, not challenges. Well, that's a challenge. On how to uh, handle objections, especially for my next uh, three meetings that I have. I have one meeting this week, a meeting next week, and the following week. And to call on more brokers and, at your suggestion, uh, more healthcare. Uh, franchise owners since I was in the field for about seven years marketing. Uh, personal is to continue to implement cushion time in between appointments and uh, watching my grandchildren uh, that which takes a lot of energy out of me so I need uh, and I've been doing I've been doing well on that um, my developmental goal is to get back to getting the book uh, a more perfect, a more perfect question, not perfect question. Someone, one of uh, one of our participants talked about a more perfect question or a more. It's beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. A more beautiful question. Um, more beautiful question and to finish the magic ingredient, which I started, I just didn't finish that. Okay. Uh, writing this down. Okay. Good. Larry? Yes, uh, for my business goal, I'm going to uh, get that sales interview I was talking about, uh, well, I was talking about this morning, but uh, I'm going to do a sales interview. My personal goal is uh, we have a situation at my church where we, uh, we got a lot of rain this past week, and we have a, a leak there that's going in the front entrance and uh, the roof got a situation up there I'm going to be working on that and um, development goal I'm in the EPL and uh, going through the EPL specifically we're working in the plan of action my plan of action this week okay how much time are you gonna put into the plan of action this week uh, probably need to do at least an hour uh, you know something um, working in the business and in personal and business. Okay, so plan of action, one hour, right? Right. Okay, Keith. Personal goal: five days in the gym and twenty-five push-ups per day. Developmental goal: I'll finish reading. Principal Center for Leadership by Covey. And the business goal, I will complete three letters per day and expose myself more so I can make sure and see six people every day and tell them what I do for the coming week. Okay, 
Good. That would be a good one for you. All right. It will be. Okay, Jeremy. No, excuse me, Jonah. Um, my business goal um, is to reach out to our people in or to the leads in San Antonio this week, moving a city over. Um, personal goal, I'm going to continue doing the New Testament reading. Um, and then developmental goal is um, uh, I'm going to alternate doing um, all cardio three days. Three days, and then the gym, three days, uh, doing intervals this week. <clears throat> okay. All right. Now, Jeremy. So my seven-day business goal is to identify the first 20 people that I'm going to call to set up sales interviews with. My seven-day personal goal is to do 300 box steps and 300 push-ups, alternating 100 push-ups every other day for our anyway alternating the days and then my seven day developmental goal is to transcribe the final chapter of as a man thinking okay all right got it and um yes thank you sir um Business goals, I'm going to continue writing on my HR document. There's a bunch of feedback emails that I have to send to three of them. This will be done in the coming seven days. On a personal level, I will continue to do my step uh, target at least three times a week. I'm doing like extra walks during lunch break or sometimes parking the car further and getting more uh, step count. On the personal development side, I'm thinking of starting a page uh, about acoustics and sound in education, probably in Arabic. Um, so I'll, I'll decide at the end of the week if that's something that's going on Facebook or, or something else. Okay, so are you going to do that or are you just going to think about it? I'm going to think about it. <laughs> This slide will be next week's uh, seven day course. <laughs> okay. Well, you, you you think about it and let us know what you come up with. Sure, because I have another page that has like a thousand followers I might use to be perfect in a sense. That's the decision I want to know what to do about. Okay. And let's see. Who do we have next? Would be Dennis. Thank you, Sam. Uh, my business goal for the week is to follow up with my new team member who recently started as it relates to prospects. Um, last week I had reported that he and I were able to quickly come up with a list of eight prospects, but I want to help him increase that to 25 prospects this week. Um, my personal goal, it was interesting when we were going back and looking at our win-wins. Um, one of my win-wins has already come and passed, and so I, I need to work on that. Um, and that was to assist my son through his challenging elementary years. Um, and so one of the steps to that is compiling a list of 10 must-read books, podcasts, messages, et cetera. Um, and so this week I am going to reach out to at least eight people, um, asking them to provide recommendations of best materials for parenting. And my developmental goal, I'm going to continue to pray with my wife at least four days this week. Okay, cool. Got it. Uh, did I miss anybody? No, didn't think so. All right, so here we are. Our little closing power thought for today is for successful people, intense burning desire is a habit, a way of life, and a deliberate course of action. So with that little thought by Paul Meyer, I'm going to say thank you for attending today's class and Class dismissed. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Good day. Thank you, Sam. Thanks, Sam.